Well, hello, everyone. Thank you, Ken and Angela, for that warm welcome. Wow. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. This is my second luncheon speech since I became the CEO here at Youth Care. I love having lunch with 800 of my closest supporters. <laughs> yes. From the youth care team and myself, I would like to share some love and gratitude for each of you. Thank you also to our elected officials, those who work in government, and those running for office. We rely on each of you to create the policies and budgets that support our work. And a huge shout out to another very special champion of young people across our state, First Lady, Mrs. Trudy Inslee. Please stand so we can celebrate our collective mission to put an end to youth homelessness forever. Well, it's been a very fast-paced nine months for me as Youth Care CEO, and I'm truly, truly honored and humbled to hold this awesome responsibility. I know many of you in the room here today are faithful for supporters of Youth Care and have been luncheon champions for 5, 10, 15 years and more. You make it possible for Youth Care to live out its, out its robust mission through serving over 1,600 young people a year with critical wraparound supports that literally change lives. Over the past few years, our nation and this community have experienced momentous and almost unimaginable financial challenges arising from a global pandemic. Youth Care, its employees and board members took sweeping actions to head off any greater disruptions for young people by focusing on keeping youth and young adults safe, stabilized, and engaged in a new way of living. Many youth serving organizations experienced great distress as tectonic plates shifted in our systems of care, wiping away foundations of many long-standing human service organizations in our community. Because of your support, youth care stood strong. In almost every newspaper and business journal across the nation, the messaging has been consistent. The nonprofit sector should anticipate a year of economic uncertainty amidst the threat of looming recession in 2023. Nonprofits will need to contend with many challenging challenges, including labor shortages, inflation, donor hesitancy, rising costs, cyber threats, and falling endowments. Woo! Let's just take a deep breath together and release that, because there is hope. <laughs> Get this, both Forbes and a nonprofit business journal contend to maintain stability, nonprofits must embrace innovation and accountability. They must take innovative approaches, increase their use of technology, and implement never before tried approaches to solving problems. Organizational leaders will listen and need to listen to those they serve, their employees, other nonprofits, and sector partners. Listen, learn, and adapt quickly, and establish clear and measurable key performance indicators for every aspect of the organization, from finances and fundraising to program outcomes. Nine months ago, I came into my role as CEO knowing that our organization was going to need to make a shift to survive the changing times. We are an agency that has taken great pride in trying to be everything for everyone. And many of you know, this is not a sustainable strategy. Youth Care has been unflinching in our commitment to take bold steps forward to shift how we deliver services and how we show up for each other in our community. We are creating new partnerships to expand our reach and impact and strengthen community bonds. And we are using this moment to call for some serious systemic changes. So, as we slowly emerge 
on the other side of this global pandemic, youth care will, and indeed we are, making the shift. Now let me be very clear about what making the shift means for youth care. While we have been and will continue to provide high quality services for young people, we will double down on our commitment to equity, ethics, and excellence. The data has been clear for way too long. Youth of color and queer youth are disproportionately represented among young people who experience homelessness, incarceration, foster care, and human trafficking. We are designing programs and services that are more responsive to the developmental and cultural needs of the young people, and that intentionality helps us to embrace which young people have been requesting for a very long time. They want, and we will deliver, more than a bed. They want and deserve a pathway to a healthy life outside of these systems of care. They want workforce skills and training that lead to economic stability and self-sufficiency. They want our entire sector to move towards making the shift so that we can have thoughtful and intentional programming that ensures a more secure future for our youth. Thank you. For over 30 years, I have engaged deeply in organizations that support the needs of youth, young adults, and their families. In fact, many years ago, I was that 19-year-old frontline staff at what was Youth Care's first adolescent shelter originally located on Beacon Hill. I've taken on many roles throughout my time in this field, and it was as a foster parent that I personally experienced the power, the power of youth care. 21 years ago, my wife and I opened our home and our hearts to a young teenager who was in foster care. She was beautiful, she was talented and full of love and hope. Sadly, so much of her hope had been beaten down, mostly by the adults in her life. But Youth Care was the one organization that stood up for her, along with the adolescent shelter team. Along with that team, we were able to continue to support this incredible young person through her challenges and her triumphs. It is this experience that changed my life and led me here today, again, having lunch with 800 amazing people who share my commitment, my hope, and love for youth care and our mission to end youth homelessness. <laughs> As part of making the shift and providing young adults uh, pathways to self-sufficiency, healing, and health, I'm excited to give you an early peek into our next big initiative. With the leadership and support of many state and local leaders, Youth Care will launch a new workforce development center on Capitol Hill at the intersection of Broadway and Pine. We are calling it the Constellation Center. As it represents youth, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it represents youth care's bold step forward in delivering on a promise to end youth homelessness and to help them reach their uh, full potential. We are and we have been doing exactly what the business experts and strategists have been suggesting, taking steps to mitigate operational risks, to extend our longevity, creating innovative approaches to delivering services and increasing our use of technology and data and joining forces with our community partners and other innovators to combine our resources so that we may create a stronger, more effective network of support across our region. The Constellation Center will allow us to join forces with other service providers and combine those resources. We will uh, create an effective safety net for young people. That center will be a hub where young people can gather and have full access to educational services, job training and placement, alongside stabilizing housing and social and behavioral health services that are developmentally and culturally responsive. Together, we 
will create new pathways for young people to secure family wage jobs that break the cycle of homelessness and generational poverty. I want to express my deep gratitude to Greg Moy, Todd Lywicki, and Sherry Schultz, who are here helping to guide this vision into a reality. Please stand so we can all thank you. Todd was not able to be here with us today, but his group from the Kraken are here. So, as we move forward, and my words need to be moved forward a bit, <laughs> you have been asking us to deepen our impact. Young adults have been telling us they want and need economic stability so that they don't have to experience homelessness ever again. It's going to take an entire community. And believe me, with your support, Youth Care promises to deliver. More to come on this exciting project as we prepare to break ground a year from now in March of 2024. It's coming fast. But today, today is about sharing our work with you, making space for the young people in our community to share their stories and to thank each of you for supporting Youth Care. Our programs and our services are stronger and more vibrant because of you. Together, we are making the shift. Thank you for being here and for your commitment, hope, and love for youth care and those we serve. 